Introduction The management of natural resources to meet people's requirements has been practiced since the pre-Vedic era. Farmers were ranked high in the social system and village management was in their hands. In order to manage land, water and vegetation, technical knowledge suitable to the specific conditions of a region was required. They gained this knowledge and developed skill through experience and learning by doing. Overexploitation of natural resources by growing population resulted in various severe problems. Destruction of vegetation has resulted in land degradation, denundation, soil erosion, landslides, floods, drought and unbalanced ecosystems. A balanced ecosystem is an urgent need. Environmentally aware consumers are producing less waste by practicing the three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle. They are buying products that are less toxic or contain less packaging using reusable containers and other reusable items, maintaining and repairing products, participating in recycling programs and buying products made from recycled materials. Objectives at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to express the necessity of resources, explain the distribution of forests, wildlife, and their sustainable management, describe the method of rainwater harvesting, identify the importance of fossil fuels like coal and petroleum. Why should we manage our resources? Not surprisingly, Exploration and development of our natural resources has spin-off benefits, especially in construction, manufacturing, and professional, scientific, and technical services. Most of the growth in the economy comes from natural resources like diamonds, oil, and gas especially. And the linkages between the resource activity and other sectors, such as retail trade, are not as strong as they could be. While this growth is good news, it means that much of the natural resources are being used off. There are some resources which cannot be replaced, so it is our duty to take proper care of them. Forests and Wildlife The forest is a complex ecosystem consisting mainly of trees that have formed a buffer for the earth to protect life forms. The trees which make up the main area of the forest create a special environment which in turn affects the kinds of animals and plants that can exist in the forest. The FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, has defined forest as land with tree crown cover or equivalent stocking level of more than 10% and area of more than 0 0.5 hectare. The trees should be able to reach a minimum height of 5 meter at maturity. In the tropical and subtropical region, forests are further subdivided into plantations and natural forests. Natural forests are forests composed of indigenous trees not deliberately planted. Plantations are defined as forest stands established by planting or and seeding in the process of afforestation or reforestation. There are about 16 major types of forests in India from the tropical type to the dry type. Forests can develop wherever there is an average temperature greater than about 10 degrees Celsius in the warmest month and an annual rainfall in excess of about 200 mm annually. In any area having conditions above this range, there exists an infinite variety of tree species grouped into a number of stable forest types that are determined by the specific conditions of the environment there. Forests can be broadly classified into many types, some of which are the tiger type, consisting of pines, spruce, etc., 
the mixed temperate forests with both coniferous and deciduous trees, the temperate forests, the subtropical forests, the tropical forests, and the equatorial rain forests. In India, it is believed that organized exploitation of forest wealth began with an increase in hunting. Ashoka the Great is said to have set up the first sanctuary to protect the forests and all life in it. The Mughal rulers were avid hunters and spent a great deal of time in the forests. It was during the British rule that the first practical move towards conservation in modern times took place. They established reserved forest blocks with hunting by permit only. Though there were other motives behind their move, it at least served the purpose of classification of and control over the forests. Sustainable Management Forests are rich and complex ecosystems which support biodiversity, provide valuable ecological services, and have considerable potential for tourism. In particular, millions of poor people depend on forest ecosystems for food, water, fuel, fiber, and both timber and non-timber products, indeed for their very survival. To achieve sustainability, there must be a rethinking of what we consider a basic need. It is common in our society to say that we need a given resource, but how much of it do we really need to use? Also, how do we decide what the basic needs of our ecosystem and the organisms living within it are? Defining what constitutes a basic need is perhaps the greatest challenge to adopting sustainable practices in our daily lives as interpretations of need vary widely from region to region, village to village and even from person to person. While ecologists are usually averse to putting a price on what is considered invaluable, the people argue convincingly that by not considering the economic benefits of forests, their conservation status is actually undermined because their diverse economic contributions remain largely unrecognized or undervalued. Water Water, as we all know, is one of the basic necessities of all life forms. We all know that it is the greatest gift of God to us. Water is naturally replenished by precipitation and naturally lost through discharge to the oceans, evaporation and subsurface seepage. Although the only natural input to any surface water system is precipitation within its watershed, the total quantity of water in that system at any given time is also dependent on many other factors. These factors include storage capacity in lakes, wetlands and artificial reservoirs, the permeability of the soil beneath these storage bodies, the runoff characteristics of the land in the watershed, the timing of the precipitation and local evaporation rates. All of these factors also affect the proportions of water lost through discharge to the oceans, evaporation and subsurface seepage. Human activities can have a large impact on these factors. Humans often increase storage capacity by constructing reservoirs and decrease it by draining wetlands. Humans often increase runoff quantities and velocities by paving areas and channelizing stream flow. Rainwater harvesting Over the years, rising populations, growing industrialization and expanding agriculture have pushed up the demand for water. Efforts have been made to collect water by building dams and reservoirs and digging wells. Some countries have also tried to recycle and desalinate water. Water conservation has become the need of the day. The idea of groundwater recharging by harvesting rainwater is gaining importance in many cities. In the forests, water seeps gently into the ground as vegetation breaks the fall. This groundwater in turn feeds wells, 
lakes and rivers. Protecting forests means protecting water catchments. In ancient India, people believed that forests were the mothers of rivers and worshipped the sources of these water bodies. This has become a very popular method of conserving water, especially in the urban areas. Rainwater harvesting essentially means collecting rainwater on the roofs of building and storing it underground for later use. Not only does this recharging arrest groundwater depletion, it also raises the declining water table and can help augment water supply. Rainwater harvesting and artificial recharging are becoming very important issues. It is essential to stop the decline in groundwater levels, arrest seawater ingress, that is, prevent seawater from moving landward and conserve surface water runoff during the rainy season. Coal and Petroleum Coal is by far the most abundant fossil fuel on earth. It is essentially carbon and is mainly used as combustion fuel. The large-scale use of coal began with the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. As the number of industries increased, demand for most sources of energy grew. Coal is the product of plants, mainly trees that died tens or hundreds of millions of years ago. Due to water logging in low-lying swampy areas or in slowly sinking lagoons, dead trees and plants did not decompose as they normally would. The dead plant matter was covered with water and protected from the oxidizing effect of air. The action of certain bacteria released the oxygen and hydrogen, making the residue richer and richer in carbon. Thick layers of this carbon-rich substance, called peat, built up over thousands of years. As more material accumulated above the peat, the water was squeezed out, leaving just carbon-rich plant remains. Pressure and temperature further compressed the material. This aided the process of producing coal as more gases were forced out, and the proportion of carbon continued to increase. The carbon slowly metamorphosed into coal over millions of years. Petroleum is found in porous rock formations in the upper strata of some areas of the Earth's crust. Known reserves of petroleum are typically estimated at around 1.2 trillion barrels with at least one estimate as high as 3.74 trillion barrels. Consumption is currently around 84 million barrels per day or 31 billion barrels per year. Because of reservoir engineering difficulties, recoverable oil reserves are significantly less than total oil in place. At current consumption levels, current known reserves would be gone in about 32 years, around 2039. However, this ignores any new discoveries, changes in demand, better technology, population growth, industrialization of third world countries and other factors. While oil is expected to remain a major source of energy in coming years, alternative energy development such as solar power, wind power, butanol, ethanol, photovoltaic, nuclear power, hydrogen or oil from oil shale and oil sands may increase in significance. Coal may also increase in use because of its existence in vast quantities in rapidly developing countries such as China and India, which are exempt from controls under the Kyoto Protocol. Three R's. Reduce, Reuse and Recycle. Reduce unnecessary waste by avoiding pointless purchases. Items that are rarely get used can be borrowed or shared with others. Buy bottles instead of cans and rechargeable batteries. Reuse items that you would normally consider as rubbish because sometimes it could be used for other purposes. Instead of throwing items away, 
Reduce waste by using them for other purposes. Paper and envelopes can be used as scrap paper for making notes. Recycle the waste products from which you can conserve some amount of energy. Make sure you have a recycle bin at your home. Keep it in an obvious place so that you will not forget to use it. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Most of the growth in the economy comes from natural resources like coal, oil and gas especially. The forest is a complex ecosystem consisting mainly of trees that have formed a buffer for the earth to protect life forms. The FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, has defined forest as land with tree crown cover or equivalent stocking level of more than 10% and area of more than 0.5 hectare. In the tropical and subtropical region, Forests are further subdivided into plantations and natural forests. Ashoka the Great is said to have set up the first sanctuary to protect the forests and all life in it. The British established reserved forest blocks with hunting by permit only. Water is naturally replenished by precipitation and naturally lost through discharge to the oceans evaporation and subsurface seepage. Rainwater harvesting essentially means collecting rainwater on the roofs of buildings and storing it underground for later use. Coal is the product of plants, mainly trees, that perished tens or hundreds or millions of years ago.